Hello friends, hello Naru. Welcome to Vijay Mohan IAS Academy and this is Vijay Mohan. Hope everyone is doing well and everyone's preparation is also going according to the plan. So past one week uh, or two weeks, uh, there were many good news for the aspirants as APPSC has released both group one and group two notifications. Uh, with, and they have stick with the, as far as group one syllabus is concerned, they have stick with the path syllabus notification release in the group one notification. Prakaram. So there were pros and cons in that. And one important thing is that they have mentioned prelims dates in the notification itself. So February last week group two prelims and March last week group one prelims and notification and if you observe both the notifications, cream vacancies could have two notifications. And one more thing is that the time period for prelims is little bit less. Okay. But however, once they have announced the exam, the ex uh, the notification one they have once they have released the notifications, the examination, the time period for the examinations will be very less. So I have been keep on saying that uh, the aspirants has to be consistent, perseverant, and constant uh, in their efforts, in their preparation. That was the thing that I, I have been telling in my videos, right? So this is the thing that I wanted to tell the aspirants. So time takku ga ondi gaabatti, yeku ga vale MCQs prepare oramu, thei vidanga revision cheyadamu, yeku ga test series le raidamu, yeku ga practice test cheyadamu. Tarava thavat samman inchna. Facts and analysis ni improve jaise karam. Idi kuncho fast pace to chayal chandra mar mata. If somebody already somebody had already uh, finished the prelim separation, then it is okay. Uh, they will uh, just start revising whatever they have read. And if somebody not yet started their preparation, at least at least this is the time that you put more effort. You put more uh, time into your preparation. Adi mere chayal chandra right? And then to partu, if somebody is confident enough that I am going to clear the prelims, then just focus uh, at, uh, I think, 10% or 20% of your preparation time on mains, right? So as far as this video is concerned, this is APPSC uh, group two, paper two, group two mains, paper two economy video course, as you know, and as part of this video course, we are in chapter one, and now we are dealing with the strategy of planning in India. Previous classes low definitions ki plan ki samanchna definitions are uh, different types of plans same online. Right? I would uh you are not seeing uh, just uh, go through the previous video so that we will be having a connectivity. Right now, starting in this video, I think uh, uh, two videos. I will make two videos, and in this video, I will be dealing with evolution of planning in India. So basically, how the planning evolved in India. So as part of this aspect, in the context, evolution of planning in India in the pre-independence uh, period or after immediately after post-independence, the previous year questions previous year questions choose especially during pre-independence period. questions and in the post-independence era also, post-independence era also. Immediately after post independence, there were many institutions established, uh, like Planning Commission, like Planning Commission, National Development Council. So, we me the good question. That is why the evolution of planning India is planning in India is important. So, as part of this evolution of planning in India, uh, we will deal it in two aspects. One is during pre independence period, and then another is during post independence period. Post independence period, right? So in this video, I'll be dealing with pre-independence period, evolution of planning during pre-independence period, right? So pre-independence period, there were, I'll tell you briefly, uh, mostly the uh, content which is going to be uh, explained in this video will be summarized in my introduction itself, in the introduction itself, right? So <clears throat> uh, during pre-independence period, there were two schools of thought. One is Calcutta School of Thought for Economic Development of India or for uh, planning and Bombay School of Thought. Bombay School of Thought. So briefly, in the Calcutta School of Thought, it was more, a, more of a socialistic oriented, socialistic oriented approach. And this Bombay School of Thought is a capitalistic, capitalistic oriented thought of planning, oriented School of thought. 
and this calcutta school of uh, thought was advocated or you can say uh, this was advocated mainly by pc mahalnobis pc mahalnobis whereas <clears throat> this bombay school of thought was advocated by industrialist prominent industrialists we will see uh, some of the names of these uh, those industrialists who propounded this or who um, supported this bombay school of thought right and as far as uh, calcutta school of thought is concerned it has given more prominence more prominence to the public sector more prominence to the public sector whereas the bombay school of thought given more prominence to the private private sector private sector right and calcutta school of thought calcutta school of thought it has it has given more importance to the capital intensive capital intensive capital intensive model of planning or model of growth or you can say capital intensive industries capital intensive industries whereas this bombay school of thought has given more importance to the labor intensive labor intensive sector or industries or plan or industries or plan so this is the basic you can say the brainstorming and so these two schools of thought calcutta school of thought in the eastern india and uh, bombay school of thought in the western india these are the two major schools of thought about the economic planning of india or economic development of india during the pre independence period and uh, calcutta school of thought india is more prone towards the or you can say uh, more uh, it advocated more for the uh, public sector and it advocated more for the capital intensive industries and it is more socialistic in its in its orientation right whereas the bombay school of thought is more capitalistic in its approach and it advocated a major role for the private sector and it also advocated for the labor intensive industries we will see uh, about uh, both of them as we move forward and why there is a difference the the basic question why calcutta school of thought has given much or more prominence to the public sector uh, whereas the and more concentrated towards the capital intensive industries and uh, whereas the bombay school of thought given more prominence to the private sector or labor intensive industries basically endante ee rendu ki enduku veeki veeki preference ichayante if you see the pre independence period calcutta or eastern india and western india uh, are different landscapes as far as entrepreneurial educational financial or capital uh, landscape is concerned capital issues are concerned ante entrepreneurial paranga education and skills level paranga labor availability paranga adhe vidhanga land relations and agriculture paranga these two were uh, very uh, very diverse uh, landscape unnaru ante for example miru eastern india chusinatlaite because of the uh, dominance of eastern india in the agriculture sector because of the prevalence of uh, zamindari system during the east indian uh, era and because of the you can say uh, because of the lack of uh, or uh, less prevalence of banking and financial facilities in the eastern india the school of thought calcutta school of thought is more lenient or more leaning towards the uh, towards the socialistic pattern of economic development ante uh, it, it has propounded the commanding heights for the public sector and the public sector role ekuga undali profit maximization motive ga unde private sector role takkuga undali ee ee rakamga ee school of thought ఉన్నారన్నమాట అదే విధంగా మీరు వెస్టర్న్ ఇండియా అంటే బాంబే స్కూల్ ఆఫ్ థాట్ ప్రామినెంట్ ఉన్న వెస్టర్న్ ఇండియా అని చూసినట్లయితే అక్కడ మనకి డ్యూరింగ్ ది బ్రిటిష్ పీరియడ్ ఇట్ వాస్ వెస్టర్న్ ఇండియా డెవలప్డ్ యాజ్ ఎ ఫైనాన్షియల్ హబ్ క్యాపిటల్ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో అవైలబుల్ అండ్ ఎంటర్ప్రెన్యూరియల్ క్లాస్ ఇన్ ద ఫార్మ్ ఆఫ్ యూ కెన్ సే పార్సీస్ అండ్ గుజరా గుజరాతీస్ ఈ పార్సీస్ అండ్ గుజరాతీస్ అనే ఎంటర్ప్రెన్యూరియల్ క్లాస్ కూడా అక్కడ ఉండడం అదే విధంగా ఇన్వెస్ట్మెంట్ కి కావాల్సిన క్యాపిటల్ కొంత ఉండడం అండ్ మోర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్లీ ఎడ్యుకేషనల్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్స్ అండ్ డెవలప్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ మిడిల్ క్లాస్ ఇవి కూడా అక్కడ వెస్టర్న్ ఇండియాలో మనకి ప్లెంటీ ఉన్నాయి మోర్ లీనియంట్ దానివల్ల ఏంటంటే ఈ బాంబే స్కూల్ ఆఫ్ థాట్ ఆర్ వెస్టర్న్ ఇండియా ఇట్ వాస్ మోర్ లీనింగ్ టువర్డ్స్ ది లేబర్ ఇంటెన్సివ్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ ఆర్ యూ కెన్ సే ఇట్ హ్యాస్ అడ్వకేటెడ్ ఫర్ ది ప్రైవేట్ రోల్ ఇన్ ది ఎకనామిక్ ప్లానింగ్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా సో ఈ రెండు బేసిక్ డిఫరెన్ ఈ ఈ సోషో ఎకనామిక్ ల్యాండ్స్కేప్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ వల్ల calcutta school of thought is leaning towards more socialistic approach of the planning whereas the bombay school of thought leaning towards more capitalistic oriented planning right so this is the basic background during the pre independence period with respect to the 
ఎకనామిక్ ప్లానింగ్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఆర్ ఎకనామిక్ డెవలప్మెంట్ మోడల్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా రైట్ నౌ ఇప్పుడు చెప్పింది ఏంటంటే మనం టెక్స్ట్ ఫార్మేట్ లో ఒకసారి సి వన్ బై వన్ రైట్ మోస్ట్లీ ఫ్యాక్చువల్ థింగ్స్ విల్ విల్ బి దేర్ యా కల్కత్తా స్కూల్ ఆఫ్ దాట్ ఫర్ ఎకనామిక్ డెవలప్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ది కల్కత్తా స్కూల్ వాజ్ అడ్వకేటెడ్ బై ప్రొఫెసర్ ప్రశాంత చంద్ర మహల్ లోబీస్ హూ ఈస్ ఆల్సో హ్యావింగ్ హూ వాజ్ ఆల్సో హ్యావింగ్ ఎ ప్రామినెంట్ రోల్ ఇన్ ఇండియన్ స్టాటిస్టికల్ సెటప్ ఆర్ ఇండియన్ స్టాటిస్టికల్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ రైట్ వాజ్ అసోసియేటెడ్ విత్ ఇండియన్ స్టాటిస్టికల్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ అండ్ ద కోర్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ స్ట్రాటజీ వాజ్ ఎ మూవ్ టువర్డ్స్ capital intensive and heavy industrialization by the public sector so the kolkata school of thought is more leaning towards capital intensive and heavy industrialization by the public sector to build key industries and control the commanding heights of a modern industrial economy for india so as i already told you it was more prone or you can say it was uh, more uh, leaning towards the capital intensive or heavy industrialization side right the private sector the private sector would have a complementary role in this mixed economy so they have been only a complementary and a supporting role ivadam jarigind anamata private sector ki that uh, right and main role will be played by the public sector and large state owned enterprises especially in sector such as steel and heavy machinery would be established as i told you so large state owned enterprises will be established example is steel and heavy machinery industries these capital intensive facilities though employing few people would be used for building machines that create other machines which are essential for the development of downstream and consumer goods industries so what is the meaning of this building machines that create other machines so basically this capital intensive facilities will build the machinery which will be again used in the manufacturing of the consumer goods that is the meaning of the building machines that create other machines which will be used for producing the consumer goods and so basically the public sector and capital intensive industries were given much major role in the or major role in the kolkata school of thought this approach allowed the government to influence the speed and direction of economic growth so basically uh, because of this controlled environment because of this uh, Uh, directed growth model or directed planning model the government will be able to influence the speed at which the planning has to be developed the direction at which the economic growth has to be go ante enta speed to ante ye area lo manam industries develop cheyali ye area lo manam ye areas ki ekkuva importance cheyali ye areas ni manam focus cheyali so ee vidhanga endante oka controlled environment ni oka centralized environment ni create cheyadam jarugundi anamata ee kolkata school of thought lo and obviously if government is having more control then it can obviously decide the speed and direction of the economic growth a areas ni manaku for example manu manufacture antunna agriculture antunna so first manu manufacturing sector lo manam facilities ni improve cheyala ledante agriculture ki sambandhinchina backward and forward linkages ni manam ekkuga focus cheyala and all these things will be decided obviously decided by the government so it can decide the speed and direction of the economic growth with this kind of planning so this is the basic thing about the <coughs> kolkata school of thought and this is the additional information about the indian statistical institute and about the cr rao who has been awarded the 2023 international prize in statistics the indian american statistician kalimpudi radhakrishna rao cr rao has been awarded the 2023 international prize in statistics which is a prestigious award as far as the statistics as far as in the as far as the field of statistics is concerned right so oxari additional information chadukonde it was more factual oriented there is a possibility of asking question in this one right and we will move towards the other school of thought that is bombay school of thought in contrast to the kolkata school of thought the bombay school of thought was championed by economists like c n vokil and p r brahmananda e brahmanand e names gurtu pettukondi endukante uh tomorrow there might be a direct question in the exam who are the proponents of bombay school of thought right so they argued that india had a surplus of cheap human labor but lacked financial capital wal em annaru ante india is having a surplus cheap human labor however it is lacking the financial capital so why not we use the cheap labor or human labor which is available and then produce the consumer goods then with the help of exporting those consumer goods we will earn some revenue and we will build the heavy machines it is like a reverse engineering process they are advocating right the focus should be on putting 
the focus should be on putting this labor force into productive work with low capital requirements okay then the strategy involved employing surplus labor to produce wage goods or simple consumer goods so first manam simple consumer goods ee surplus labor tho ee manakunna ee middle class tho manakunna koncham skill skilled labor tho ante first we will develop consumer goods like clocks toys shoes snacks etc these low capital and low risk business would attract entrepreneurs generate quick output and yield rapid returns on investment so we'll em antunnaru ante so we will first so we will first this low risk uh, we will first take up this low capital low risk businesses and we will use the cheap labor human labor that is available with us and we will then produce the consumer goods and and it will give you a quick profits then what it ante it will attract the entrepreneurs it will attract the investment and it will generate quick output and it will give rapid returns on investment then we will focus on the larger heavy industries so labor would produce goods that they would eventually consume and creating a self sustained demand so the uh, goods that were being generated which will eventually consumed by the labor which will, will, will and eventually create a self sustaining demand and uh, the uh, market is uh, market is also available with us because of the huge population so మనం ప్రొడ్యూస్ చేసిన కన్సూమర్ గుడ్స్ మన దగ్గర మార్కెట్ కూడా ఉంది అండ్ దేర్ బై దేర్ విల్ బీ ఏ సెల్ఫ్ సస్టైన్డ్ విచువల్ సైకిల్ ఒక ఒక సెల్ఫ్ సస్టైన్డ్ డిమాండ్ అండ్ కన్సంప్షన్ సైకిల్ ఏర్పాటు అవుతుంది అని చెప్తున్నారు అనమాట అండ్ దిస్ అప్రోచ్ వాజ్ కాంట్రరీ టు మహల్ నోబిస్ విజన్ ఆఫ్ స్టేట్ కంట్రోల్డ్ క్యాపిటల్ ఇంటెన్సివ్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ విత్ లాంగ్ గెస్టేషన్ పీరియడ్ యాజ్ వీ నో యాజ్ వీ ఆల్రెడీ డిస్కస్ దిస్ ఈస్ క్వైట్ కాంట్రాస్ట్ టు ది సోషలిస్టిక్ ప్యాటర్న్ ఆఫ్ కల్కత్తా స్కూల్ ఆఫ్ థాట్ అండ్ ద వేజ్ గుడ్ స్ట్రాటజీ wage goods strategy which is nothing but the bombay school of thought would have directed investments into agriculture rural infrastructure and simple consumer manufacturing both for domestic and export markets so e labor intensive wage goods strategy entante it will drive eventually investments into agriculture loki adhe vidhanga rural infrastructure loki consumer manufacturing loki manaki investments ni draw chestundi entrepreneurs ni draw chestundi ani cheptunnaru so what about the uh, capital goods ante manaki especially guys short term lo konni capital goods avasaram aithay so for that they are telling that we will uh, we as we are producing simple consumer items we will export that simple consumer items to the uh, 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 to the other countries and we will earn some foreign exchange and with that foreign exchange in short term we will purchase or we will import capital goods and and ikkada em antunnaru ante it would have imported capital goods in the short term so e capital goods in short term lo manavi capital goods ni ఇంపోర్ట్ చేసుకోవచ్చు ఎట్లా అంటే విత్ ద ఫారిన్ ఎక్స్చేంజ్ అర్న్ ఫ్రమ్ ది ఎక్స్పోర్ట్ ఆఫ్ సింపుల్ కన్సూమర్ ఐటమ్స్ సో ఈ సింపుల్ కన్సూమర్ ఐటమ్స్ ని మనం ఎక్స్పోర్ట్ చేసి దాని నుంచి వచ్చిన ఫారిన్ ఎక్స్చేంజ్ తో షార్ట్ టర్మ్ లో మనం క్యాపిటల్ గుడ్స్ ని ఇంపోర్ట్ చేసుకుందాం అండ్ యాజ్ వీ గో యాజ్ వీ మూవ్ ఫార్వర్డ్ వీ విల్ ట్రై టు ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ ది హెవీ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ దట్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ ద క్యాపిటల్ గుడ్స్ అన్నట్లు దిస్ వెస్టర్న్ ఆర్ యూ కెన్ సే బాంబే స్కూల్ ఆఫ్ దట్ అడ్వకేటింగ్ దిస్ థింగ్ అండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ సిమిలర్ టు ద స్ట్రాటజీస్ ఆఫ్ జపాన్ తైవాన్ అండ్ సౌత్ కొరియా these are called asian tigers and uh, thereby leading to the high economic growth employment rising exports and prosperity so ee vidhanga entante vallu over a period of time mana first simple consumer items tho start chesi over a period of time we will improve our foreign exchange reserves we will improve our investment profile we will improve our entrepreneurial profile then we will start producing heavy industries so that uh, we will be able to generate the revenue generate the employment and generate the exports and prosperity and economic growth ani advocate chestunnaru anamata right this is these are the two schools of thought as far as the economic development of uh, our economic planning of india is concerned during the pre independence period and uh, so e two schools of thought e e, e two ends madhyalo malli manike entante there were some other plans which were advocated by some individuals which are important for the exam సో మనం కొన్ని వాటికి సంబంధించి కొన్ని ప్లాన్స్ చూద్దాము అండ్ దీస్ ఆర్ మోస్ట్లీ ఫిక్స్డ్ బిట్వీన్ దీస్ టూ ఎండ్స్ అనమాట రైట్ సో వన్ ఈస్ యా ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఈస్ విశ్వేశ్వర ప్లాన్ ఇట్ వాజ్ అడ్వకేటెడ్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ థర్టీ ఫోర్ అండ్ వన్ మోర్ థింగ్ ఐ వాంట్ టెల్ ఈస్ దట్ మోస్ట్లీ వీటికి సంబంధించి ఫ్యాక్చువల్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఎక్కువగా అడగడం జరుగుతుంది రైట్ సో విశ్వేశ్వరయ్య ప్లాన్ ఇట్ వాజ్ అడ్వకేటెడ్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ థర్టీ ఫోర్ మోక్షగుండం విశ్వరయ్య విశ్వేశ్వరయ్య నైన్టీన్ థర్టీ ఫోర్ బుక్ టైటిల్ ప్లాన్డ్ ఎకానమీ ఫర్ ఇండియా సో ఈ బుక్ లో ఆయన ఇండియాకి సంబంధించి ఒక టెన్ ఇయర్ 
plan strategy ni ivadam jarigindi so what is that book plan economy for india it has laid out a plan for india's economic development over a 10 year period right and it has advocated or aimed to shift labor from agriculture to industry and double the national income with within 10 years idi meeru gurtu pettukondi and fiki proposal the federation of indian uh, chambers of uh, commerce and industry so fiki proposal same in the 1934 year fiki advocated a comprehensive plan and the establishment of a planning commission for economic development encompassing all economic activities so Fikki proposal lo manaki oka planning commission ni gurinchi kuda propose cheyadam jarigindi and congress plan this is more important it was advocated in the 1938 yeah and subhash chandra bosch the then president of the indian national congress in 1938 so 1938 lo subhash chandra bosch i think 1938 and 39 subhash chandra bosch was the president of the inc uh, and he advocated as the president of the Indian National Congress in 1938. He established the National Planning Committee, NPC, under the chairmanship of Jawaharlal Nehru. This is very, very important. Uh, many times previously, there were many questions on this. The committee's aim was to formulate an economic plan that would provide a decent standard of living for the common people. And uh, however, due to World War II, the final report was published in 1949. <laughs> then Bombay plan. Yeah. As I already told you, it was advocated in uh, 1944. Several prominent industrial capitalists and economists prepared a plan for economic development for India in 1944. It was popularly known as the Bombay Plan. Purushottam Das, Thakur Das, and J.R.D. Tata. These were the prominent, uh, important personalities among eight industrialists involved in this plan. Total, how many industrialists involved? Eight industrialists involved. The more prominent ones are Purushottam Das, Thakur Das, and J.R.D. Tata. And it advocated a role for the government in core economic sector while preserving the private sector's role. So, a core sectors are nationally important and private skill or private intervention possible. What it has reserved or it has advocated a role for those core economic sectors or advocated a role for the government in those core economic sectors while the remaining ones they uh, propounded that Private, se private sector's role has to be more, right? The major objectives were, so objectives in the restructuring of agriculture, rapid industrialization, development of essential goods industries, promotion of small scale and cottage industries and social welfare and so on, right? Bombay plan has paved way for a systematic design of planning of the country in future. So in Bombay plan, it has given a blueprint, a, a systematic design for the planning that is to come after independence. So post-independence uh, planning missionary or planning model then they took this Bombay plan as a draft and as a uh, as a precursor, right? It has given some semblance of guidance and whatever, right? Next stone is Gandhian plan that is advocated in 1944 and it was drafted by Sriman Narayan Agarwal, a staunch follower of Gandhian principles in 1944. It was closely aligned with the Gandhian economic thought. Gandhian economic thought different different aspects of the trusteeship and the village self-autonomy and the So uh, this was closely aligned. This Gandhian plan was closely aligned with these economic Gandhian economic thoughts. And the plan placed a strong emphasis on agriculture, rural development, promotion of rural and cottage industries, and decentralization, right? And self-contained villages and a decentralized economic structure. Self-contained villages and decentralized economic structure were the major philosophy or ideology of the Gandhian plan. So Gandhian plan is related self-contained villages, villages and decentralized economic structure. Economic structure concentrated on the world. Decentralized economic structure on the And Niti Aayog is one of the examples of this decentralized economic structure. Right? So Gandhian plan law, we rent the features are important. People's plan. This was more radical plan. It was advocated in 1945 by none other than M. N. Roy, and he is the one. Uh, he is the first person who advocated or who uh, who supported the idea of constitution for India. Right, the radical humanist leader, and he is also associated with the establishment of Communist Party of India for the first time in India. Communist Party of India in India. Right. So, is the radical humanist leader M. N. Roy prepared another plan, a 10-year plan in 1945, known as the People's Plan. This plan was grounded in the principles of Marxist socialism and had a fundamental objective of ensuring the provision of the essential necessities of life for the people. So he is more concerned about the about providing 
essential necessities of the essential necessities for the people through the plan so plan plan ela undal antunnadu ante at least first you provide the essential necessities for the people then you will uh, strive for the improved standard of living right it plays a significant it plays a significant emphasis on the development of agriculture uh, and the industries manufacturing consumer goods so obviously the plan will be focused more on agriculture and rural development and industries manufacturing the consumer goods right the plan strongly advocated for state owned industrialization so it has more socialistic leaning right especially marxist uh, socialism so the plan strongly advocated for state owned industrialization state should be at the commanding heights and state should be having the authority over the planning process so state owned industrialization ni advocate chesindi while the bombay plan had capitalist characteristics capitalist characteristics the people's plan had socialist characteristics right idu okati gurtu pettukondi and then another plan was sarodaya plan which is being uh, advocated or which is being pronounced or announced in 1950 it was drafted by jayaprakash narayana and it drew its its inspiration from both the gandhian plan and the sarodaya ideas of vinoba bal so gandhian plans manam pain cheptunnatlu gandhian plan lo konni features ni adhe vidhanga sarodaya ideas of vinoba bal ee ideas ni kuda konni kalapadam jarigindi it focused on so usually obviously the sarodaya ideas of vinoba bal are more focused on land reform so the plan the sarodaya plan focused on land reforms village autonomy and cottage industry so land reforms meeda village autonomy meeda and cottage industries meeda meeda ekkuga pin cheyadam jarigindi ee sarodaya plan and community work and trusteeship dantho padaga gandhian principles ainatundi community work and trusteeship of the gandhian ideology and sarodaya principles guided the plan sarodaya principles vinoba bhave ప్రపోజ్ చేసిన సర్వోదయ ప్రిన్సిపల్స్ అందులో భాగంగా ల్యాండ్ రిఫార్మ్స్ విలేజ్ అటానమీ అండ్ కాటేజ్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ కి ఎక్కువగా ప్రామినెన్స్ ఇస్తూ గాంధీయన్ ప్రిన్సిపల్స్ అయినటువంటి కమ్యూనిటీ వర్క్ అండ్ ట్రస్టీషిప్ వీటిని కూడా ఈ ప్లాన్ లో ఇంక్లూడ్ చేయడం జరిగింది సో దీస్ వర్ ది బ్రీఫ్ ఎఫర్ట్స్ డ్యూరింగ్ ద ప్రీ ఇండిపెండెన్స్ పీరియడ్ రిగార్డింగ్ ది ఎకనామిక్ ప్లానింగ్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా రైట్ సో డ్యూరింగ్ ద బ్రిటిష్ రూల్ డ్యూరింగ్ ద బ్రిటిష్ రూల్ మెనీ ఆఫ్ దీస్ ప్లాన్స్ అండ్ ప్రపోజల్స్ డి నాట్ కేమ్ టు ఫ్రూషన్ Uh, due to passive attitude of the british government so there were large scale opposition there was large scale opposition uh, from the british government uh, with respect to implementation of these plans so there will be uh, obviously manaki uh, entante ekkuga implementation jaragaledu viti viti meeda right however after gaining independence planning india has been influenced by various proposals so after gaining independence entante ee previous plans anni manaku oka blueprint laga oka draft laga use chesukodam jarigindi veeti nunchi manchi characteristics ni ante manchi proposals ni teesukoni manam then we have moved forward in the post independence economic development right and in the next class we will discuss about the post independence period efforts as far as the indian planning is concerned and andulo bhaganga ante planning commission enti planning commission functions enti రైట్ అదే విధంగా నేషనల్ డెవలప్మెంట్ కౌన్సిల్ అంటే ఏంటి వాటి ఫంక్షన్స్ ఏంటి ప్లానింగ్ కమిషన్ కి ఎన్డిసి కి ఉన్న రిలేషన్ ఏంటి సో ఇవి చూస్తాం రైట్ అంటిల్ దెన్ థ్యాంక్ యూ